Hey guys, welcome back to Jordan's room. I'm here with the fashion goat, Billy Meeks. How you going, bros? <laughs> yeah, good, bro. Thanks for that. Uh, fashion goat. <laughs> I don't know about that, but I'll take it's it. The truth, take man. It. It's the truth. Even Jack, even Jack has given you that too. So, um, oh, okay. but but uh, first of all, bro, thanks for coming on, man. It's um, it's uh, it's been a bit rough, obviously, being in lockdown. So I've been mm. doing more like um, you know, getting guests on and shit like that. So grateful for your time, bro. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I, you you know that I consume your content a lot. So to be on here, to 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 tap into my phone at some point and see Jordan's room and my name, that's that's ticked off the bucket list, bro. Oh, grateful, man. Grateful. I appreciate that. Eh? Yeah, it's it's been it's been a pretty wild ride, man. Because I've been I've been a part of YKTR like on and off for a few years now. So mm. and it, it all just started off. Um, me and I were on the piss one day. It was just, mm. I was like, fuck, give me my own podcast, man. And he's like, yeah, sweet. So, so, but um, yeah, grateful, grateful for you coming on, man. Um, yeah, what have you been, sure. what have you, you been up to, bro? Um, fuck, we're in a pretty, pretty cool time at the moment. We obviously just finished up our season about two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. So yeah. we're in the off season. Um, works a little bit different over here to, to normal. Like we've got pretty much three and a half months off so and that's like off off until we get back in and start training together so oh true yeah i've just been cruising obviously we had pretty big celebration after the final and yeah um took some recovering after that but <laughs> yeah i'm sort of just just getting back into training and stuff like that to keep myself sane well because so for like this, this is for a few people that potentially don't know so your footy journey started so you, um, where did you first start playing, bro? Where did you grow up and sort of get into footy? Yeah, yeah. So, um, long story short, I mean, I started in Sydney. I was born in Sydney and Manly. Um, yeah. Grew up there, played all my juniors there, and went to boarding school at Joey's, um, and then played club footy at North. Um, yeah. And then when I was, I sort of played in the Australian Sevens under twenties and stuff like that, and then moved over to the UK when I was twenty one. I uh, got a contract over there. So uh, played four years there, came back, played super rugby for about four and a half years uh, and then ended up over here. So yeah, it's sort so, of been all over. So you went, so you, you went to the force first, didn't you? And then, and then rebels. I went wow. um, from the UK. So Gloucester for four years and then back to the force uh, in, in Western Australia. And then yeah. I was there for a year and then went to the rebels for three years. Yeah. Cause I was, yeah. um, when I first moved over, over. From, I, when I moved over from when I moved over from New Zealand, I went over to Perth, bro, and played over there. So I was like, um, you know, like Kyle Godwin and like Ollie Hoskins and stuff like that. You would have met yep. all those boys, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I know all those boys. I yeah, was I like, I played with those boys, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going through. I went through like under sixteens, under eighteens, and then school boys with them, and then, um, and then I moved here, played at Randwick, but yeah. Grew up with those guys sort of playing footy, but they obviously went the footy route and I went the party route. <laughs> it all come full circle. You went circle, the better though, route, the funner it route. All come, it all come full circle. 100%. But, uh, they'll be partying after rugby, so don't worry. <laughs> um, bro, like when you um, when you were playing over here, like at the Rebels and stuff, when when did you sort of make the, the, like, the decision to move over the like to move over and, and play overseas sort of was, was the contracts over here not as good or were you just like looking for a bit of a change or? No. Nah, so the first time that I moved overseas was when I was 21 and I went to Gloucester. Um, yeah. And that was heaps different to sort of this time that I left. The first time was um, purely because I couldn't get a contract back home. I was trying as hard as I could to get a contract. There's obviously only, there was five yeah. super rugby teams at the time, but, yeah. To be honest, looking back, I actually just wasn't good enough. But, you know, I, I was hating people for and selected. So I think through having a British passport, um, I was I was able to go over and play in England, which was really cool. And obviously that's where that's where I really got my first professional contract and then sort of developed as a player being in yeah. and around the professional environment day in, day out. Um, and then coming coming this time, it was probably probably more of a lifestyle and um, just a bit of change. I just, suppose like I throughout my career I feel like change for me is equal growth and this was no different like it was coming to America you know to a competition it's fairly new I didn't know much about it um yeah. it's still sort of growing over here so obviously living in LA was was a big bonus um and we had a lot of Aussies coming over so it was going to be sort of familiar ground but then a lot of um, 
familiar stuff as well. So it was just an opportunity for change. Um, and it's probably been the best six months I've ever had in rugby in my whole career. So, um, yeah. yeah, super happy that I made that decision. Yeah. Give me, give me two sex, bro. I'm just going to quickly. Um, yeah, bro. So when, before you went over to, before you went over to LA, did you like talk to some of the other boys from Oz before you made your decision or was it sort of just uh, like a personal thing? And then you found out when you were going over. To be honest, I was probably one of the first guys to sign to come over here. Me and my roomie, Gussie, um, yeah. we got approached pretty, pretty early by the owner of our team um, sort of sat down with him a couple of times and then um, over the phone, sorry. And then we finally got to sit down with him for lunch and he sort of he explained his vision for this team um, sort of explained a little bit more around the major league rugby and what it's about. And then sort of the future and what he sort of sees this team being about. Um, and obviously the main thing he, he wanted to build a team that was going to win the comp. And um, he's obviously done that now, which is, which is pretty cool. And mm-hmm. um, I didn't really, I don't really check in with many people. I feel like with these, it's I always check in with my closest, like my obviously my parents and then my manager. And they've always seemed to give me the right advice and my missus as well, obviously. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like all these decisions I've ever had to make in terms of leaving or going to new teams, they've always turned out the right decisions. So, yeah, I'll, I'll take it. I'll take this one. Yeah, bro. Honestly, because uh, I remember you going over. I was because a, f- a few of my mates that I played with at Wix were talking about going over before COVID. Yeah. Hit. And um, is there like a cap on international players that they can have in each team, or is it yep. sort of just whoever you can sign? Because I know in Japan you can only have like a, f- a handful of players that come up from overseas, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same here. There's I think it's twelve internationals you can have. Um, oh, okay. So it's a fair few. It's not it's like a fair, fair much, whack. It's pretty much your whole team. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then I think when you win the comp, like we have, I think next year we have to have maybe 10 or it's a nine oh, or something like that. Right, so right. it sort of fluctuates depending on how your team's going. But we're pretty lucky. Obviously, first year in the competition, we, we could have, I think it was 12. Yeah. So mm. we had a fair few Aussies over here. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when, you, when you moved over there, you had to, your, your partner couldn't move straight away, could you? Well, when I initially signed, which was the start of last year, she she had no intention of coming over here. Um, oh, okay. I was I was going to come and sort of do six months here because the season's quite short. Then maybe come back home, either play back home or do some work or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's sort of how it was just going to run, and we both sort of accepted that. I mean, the majority of our relationship has been sort of pretty chopped up and long distance. That's just sort of how footy goes, that's just and the lifestyle. Yeah. Um, that's just the way it is. But um, sort of down the line, maybe like five or six months later, she got approached by someone um, who's her now co-founder to start a business over here. Oh, really? Um, which was completely random. Like it came out of the blue and um, she was sort of umming and ahhing about whether she was going to make that decision. And then it obviously just turned out to be the best thing. And the fact that we're both here in LA working is pretty crazy considering that we've both never had that opportunity so far. So, yeah. I mean, it's just all the stars sort of aligned and, now we're here in LA and I can't see myself leaving to be honest. Yeah. So how does, how would that work out in regards to visas? Like how, how long did you so, sign there for? Was it like two? Two years. Yeah. 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 So I mean, visas are pretty tricky over here, but there's obviously different rankings. Um, Michelle, my missus actually got the highest ranking you can get, which is an O one, I think because of all, oh. all the stuff that she did at Bumble um, and sort of her career she's deemed as an extraordinary person. I don't know, it's some sort of yeah, wording, yeah. but um, yeah, uh, apparently being a footy player isn't as good, but <laughs> um, yeah, we got visas, two year visas and it, the renewal process is pretty easy. And hopefully down the line, we can up it to an O and then maybe potentially a green card, depending on how long you stay here. But yeah. um, no, that, that part of it was, was pretty crazy. The team's lawyers looked after all that. And how's like, how's the lifestyle over in LA? Cause you know, it's, uh, it looks, it looks, it looks like fun, man. I'm not going to lie. A, a few of the boys it's are over like, there partying it up, and yeah. he re- he reckons it's just like he's moved over there for modelling, and he was saying that there's literally shit happening every night of the week. Like, so yeah, he said he could wild. go out on a it's Tuesday wild, and have the man. best night. It's wild. Like, it's everything and more that I inspected. Like, I obviously I've been here a few times traveling when I was a bit younger, but didn't yeah. really get to fully experience. And you know, when you live somewhere, you like you get to experience it fully. Sure. Um, I feel like being where we are here in Venice, you've got like 
you've got the mountains and the ranges where you can go for hikes if you're feeling like you're on that sort of vibe. And then you can go into Hollywood if you want to go clubbing. Venice, you can just go have cocktails Influence, or just yeah. sit by the beach. Um, and then there's obviously the sporting capital of the world. Like there's all the best teams in the world around here. Yeah. And it's just sort of got everything that you want. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm loving it, mate. Like I haven't even got to do half the stuff I want to do, but um, even the travel stuff, like we had a, we had a bye week halfway through the season, got the week off and it was a two hour flight to Mexico and we spent the week in Cabo. Like <laughs> see, normally I'm going to tweet heads or something and <laughs> you know, yeah, you're going to cool and gather for the weekend. Yeah. They're like, yeah. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. So, bro, man, no, it's, it's so special. It, and, and if you got the opportunity, cause obviously you had a, a, a pretty good season over there, you got, awarded back of the year for the competition so congrats on that bro um, do you see yourself potentially moving back here if a, if a contract comes up or will you look to to make a push to stay there after your contract finished um it's a tough one like i i, I won't say never but right now i'm so happy here that i can't see myself leaving <laughs> i think um yeah it's just it's sort of brought the fun back to everything. Obviously playing in super rugby back in Australia during COVID was a pretty, pretty downer environment. And, um, you know, the state of Australian rugby was pretty publicly known that it was in a pretty bad place. So yeah, I, like it's definitely on the up. Um, it's getting better and like um, they're doing some really good stuff at the moment. So I don't know. I, I don't want to say never, but um, yeah. if I ended up playing here for the next five or six years and finished my sweet. career here, I, I'd be stoked, mate. So yeah. And, in regards we'll to the competition, because it's it's obviously a new competition and people try and start stuff out like that. But do you see Americans obviously fucking jump on jump on, you know, sports like there was no tomorrow? Yeah. So do you see the MLR becoming as big as as big as you know the NFL and and do you think that it has the legs to do so? I think eventually, yeah, for sure. It's um they're slowly starting to get the right idea of what, what needs to be done. Um, it's obviously a lot different to rugby back home. Yeah. Um, entertainment here is probably the biggest factor, you know, with like NFL and the NBA and stuff like that. You go to a game, it's a full experience. You might not even watch a game. It's just like just everything's going on. So that side of things has been really cool to see here. Like we, we had like Fat Man Scoop play at our semi-final, then Steve Aoki played at the final. Like it just doesn't, it just doesn't happen. Those, <laughs> They played full set. Oh, we had like a full Batman set. scoop, like coming in the change room and seeing his crook and clan. Like we're just, I was just like, what, what is going on? Um, so like the entertainment side of things, and then like obviously in America they've got the most amazing athletes. So if you can, yeah, sort of start from the the ground level and the grassroots and get them learning rugby from a young age, then we'll, and America will be in a really good position. But right now it's probably more crossover athletes that didn't quite make it in the NFL yeah, coming to play yeah. rugby, and they're like their skills probably just aren't up to scratch, but. Um, can you yeah, the see? There. Yeah, can you see? Uh, in my mind, I can see like the US being a powerhouse in rugby in like in, in a 100. few years' time. Like just the yeah. once they catch on to how to play properly and sort of read the game, yeah. I, I I genuinely believe that it's going to be scary times for you know other countries and whatnot because oh, hundred percent. Like seeing those athletes in real life, you know, people who didn't make it in the NFL and and whatnot, like. Mm. Is it just a totally different, you know, level of, of, of like athlete? Yeah, there's there's like the guys that we have come across are like the forwards are just like the strongest guys you've ever seen. Like they're just beasts in the weight room. Yeah. But then they can't like function properly on the field because like yeah, obviously yeah. in NFL, they've just got one specific role and it's fucking stop people it's coming through. That's it. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then the backs that come over like freakish athletes, super quick agile but just can't really can't, catch a ball or there's the no game kicking probably. game or yeah so yeah, yeah it's it's there it's just about the coaching side of thing and the development side but it'll it'll come like it this league is attracting better and better players i think once they start to sort of increase the salary cap can pay people more and it becomes a choice of you know not about money and you, you come into play in america then it's mm -hmm. only going to get better but it's it's getting there and because they've started a uh, a uni league as well, like in the university as well, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. So all the colleges play now. Um, we've had a bit to do with the UCLA. Obviously, they're just down the road. Um, 
I think their fullback who was training with us all year because they've, they've got like a draft system over here for the rugby, which is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was um, looking into that actually. So he, the, Eric, the guy that was training with, I just looked and he got he got like first big draft. So he's going to a team and like, oh, is that, that is that for, Sorry, is that a uh, sorry? Who got the first pick? Oh, just a, a guy that was training with us all year who yeah. is at UCLA at college. Um, he's going like he got first round pick. So it's like, oh, really? Yeah. So all the college guys are. They're starting to play it in college, which obviously means they're actually starting a bit younger and learning it. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. And do you think a draft system would do any any good for like the Australian sort of circuit? Because I know that like a lot of players in Sydney, it's all a lot a lot come from like private schools and mm. and that's the same over in, in oh, not really the same over in NZ, but um I, I feel like a lot of the private school boys over here in, in Australia sort of get that first pick in rugby union. And I, I reckon yeah. that's probably why it's not as crazy over here because do you think a draft, a draft like in rugby union in Australia would, would bring life to sort of the comp? Potentially. I think it's definitely an idea like to change it up. Um, I just think like the biggest, the biggest issue for losing players from, union at the moment coming out of school to league and AFL and stuff is like obviously the money thing like mm. kids are finishing school when they're 17 and the Roosters are offering them 60k to come and you know be yeah. in the squad and the, tar the Tars or someone's offering them 10 grand and yeah. like a car for a year yeah. like you know <laughs> I'll be going to the Chookies you know mm. like mm. Um, so that's probably the biggest issue but just trying to keep as many players in union as you can because um, they're losing a lot of good players yeah, and I think like the rugby union doesn't just doesn't sort of uh, like it hits different in some in some places, but it's because Australia has like AFL rugby mm. league, so it's you know in New Zealand it's quite focused. But yeah, yeah, uh, it's a it's an interesting one because when the Tars are on, they're you know they're packed, but then yeah. <laughs> when they're off, it's like you can count it count on on two hands and on how many people are going to watch the game. I know, I know. And that's just, that's like the scariest thing over the last few years. Like, and probably the most disappointing thing is like, you know, when we were growing up, you go to a Tars game and yeah. like Oxford Street and Paddington is pumping. Yeah, man, All the yeah, pubs yeah. are overflowing. Everyone's going down the SFS, getting on the beers, it's chockers. Yeah. And it's just a super rugby game. Now it's like, you get 3,000 people there maybe and half of them are family and friends. Like it's... Yeah, and there's... And there's I, I found that there... I don't know if it's me just getting older or I just feel like there's really no household names that are mm. consistent enough in rugby union. Yeah. You know, like, like back in the day, it was like the boys that you play with now, like they were there yeah. consistent, like Quaid, like, but mm. I feel like they, because they haven't been consistent in their wins that they're just chopping and changing from who, who's in their team. Like, yeah, it's, it, it, but we're in rugby league, you know, you've, You've, you've got those consistent names in the comp all the time, but you get a good player over here. And then, as you said, the money might not be as good. So they jump over to the UK or yeah, Japan and they're, or, and they're gone. What's yeah. what I don't totally understand what's going on with the rugby circuit now, but in regards to COVID, how, how is it all working? Because like, do you know much about what's ha how it's ha working out in New Zealand and in Australia? Like how does the competition Work because I thought the yeah. force, I thought the force got like relegated and then, and then I see them playing again. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, like there was a the massive force. uproar and then all of a sudden the, the forces started their own comp and they're playing Fiji and I'm oh, like, bro, I don't even fuck? honestly would speak about an hour about how the force have been got like moving around the last couple of years. But that was the year I was there. We got kicked out of the comp. Yeah, because Australian rugby decided to go down to four teams, but. Um, yeah, I mean, they, they cut the Super Rugby and they basically did it like an Australian conference thing. So all yeah. Australian teams play each other and then there's a champion of that. And then you had the Kiwi teams play each other, champion of that. And then they had a combined competition where I think, was it, was it in Australia or New Zealand? Anyway, they had, they played Trans-Tasman, they played against each other. Yeah. Um, and obviously all the test match stuff now is like pretty tricky. Um, the Wallabies had to go to Auckland, I think, like a couple of weeks early and chill there for a bit. But yeah, it makes it all tricky, but they're still making it work, to be fair, which yeah. which is pretty good. There's still like test matches on, which is good. Yeah, yeah. It's just, and I think the difference with the NRL was that obviously New Zealand only has one team, so they can just yeah. move them over here. But yeah, yeah. It's, 
it's it's so weird it, it almost just puts me off just watching it because you're like Fuck, yeah i know what's actually what is going, going on <laughs> and then 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 are the fours stan, in or are they out <laughs> and then stan stands like stan has the rights to rugby and i'm like where the fuck did this happen <laughs> now i've got to sign up to stan and then cancel my netflix account and i'm like what's yeah. going on rugby union man it's fucking Bro, actual so yeah, yeah it's oh, been all up. It's, it, it like that's and that's another reason why people were just um uh, uh just moving to rugby i reckon rugby like the eyes are moving to rugby leagues because they're just so on top of the ball with their like marketing and oh, their news everything. and news getting out all their shows bad. yeah yeah and then i also yeah. the the i could go on for fucking ages the union the the union shows are fucking boring at some point. <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? But anyways, yeah. each to their own. Um, some of the no, boys I'm you play with from, from Australia, um, uh, like you've got some of the goats in your team there. Like, yeah, was that cool? Obviously, once you heard like that they were moving over there and like, you know, yeah. how's that, how's that been playing with them? Have you, you would have, you know, learned a lot of, you know, of, of yeah. them as well. So how's that bit, whole experience been? Oh man, like, honestly so special like i as you said like i signed pretty early and then they signed on a little bit later um yeah. and when i heard the news i actually couldn't quite believe it because they're they're guys that i grew up watching um and have like idolized for so many years um obviously got to know them through like wallabies and um you know just meet them when you play them and all that kind of stuff mutual friends yeah. but then to finally actually be on a team with them like my my biggest concern coming over here was I wouldn't get better as a player just because I didn't know much about the competition of course. Um, and obviously having those guys every, sing every single day just like pushing me, teaching me um, and just watching the way they go about their work like Matty Gitto is like I think he's 37, 38 um, and he was one of the best players in the comp this year and then Adam Ashley Cooper is you know, similar age, a little bit younger but he's still carving up like carving these boys up. like come in, they crush the gym they're diligent around how they work. They still get on the beers. They all about culture. It's just like yeah. you just learn so much from guys like that. And then, yeah, just to play with them for a year, bro, it's just like fucking amazing. Yeah, and I think as well having like your like your guys' names attached to the competition, it then it then pushes for you know other good players that potentially are like fuck I'm over playing over here. I want to go yeah. overseas. It, it pushes them to go. You know, obviously. To move over there so it's, it's exciting times man like yeah and the crowds that the crowd crowd wise like in those games were you guys pulling big crowds or like relatively good sized crowds for for obviously first year yeah it's solid solid like we obviously we, we played the la coliseum which is like usc's home ground home ground um that would have been had like 84 insane. olympics and like it's 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 like an institute bro it's the most crazy stadium i've ever seen yeah um but obviously that's a, like a 90,000 seater stadium. So like we're not yeah, going to get close to that, to... but each week it was growing. Um, I, I feel like a lot of people here still don't really know what rugby is. Like, I think that's where the entertainment factor comes where they can just come and have a good time and tell their yeah. friends about it and come back. But the crowds are definitely growing. Um, and like the atmosphere, we had a home semi and a home final, like it was pumping. So um, it's definitely growing over here and like, I think after winning the competition, the success that we've had, I think, um, you know, a lot of people love, people love following successful teams. So hopefully, oh, hopefully people can jump on the guillotine. Especially, yeah. How, how, how do you say the name? Because I was saying that Jackson, I was like, <laughs> bro, I'm dyslexic as is. <laughs> I'm dyslexic <laughs> as is, man. I can't spell. What the fuck? I fucking, I don't want to say the wrong name, man. So I'm just going to try and wait for him to so say don't say it. it. <laughs> yeah, I to, hey, man, you like the team at LA team? How do you, how do yeah, you say, um, what, what is it? Is it like a, a drink? It's a drink, yeah. So yeah. it's, um, it's called the Giltinis, um, which is fucking wild, but it's, it's our <laughs> owner, Adam Gilchrist. Um, he's obviously the start of his name and Martini. So he's yeah. got two teams in the competition. One of them's the Austin Gilgronis, like a Negroni. Oh, yeah. Um, loves and, his and piss. Where the <laughs> loves his piss. Well, that's like <laughs> another one of my favorite things about playing here. Like in our HQ, like our training facility, we've got three businesses that work out of there, obviously us, and then yeah. Gilly's Beers, which is his beer company. So they're like offices on us. And they give us like unlimited beers and oh, the, the beer is I've got to send you some, bro. They're fucking they're so good. Please, please do. Yeah, I will. Please I'll get do. them in the mail. Yeah, done. Um, 
and then a coffee company as well. So they're out the front like, making coffee and brekkie for everyone in the morning. So um, yeah, Giltini's came from his name and it, it caused a fair bit of fucking uproar when it was announced because everyone's like, fuck, is it, I can't follow a cocktail. Like, what, <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what um, does that mean? But... I don't know, man. He's he's uh, each to their own, man. He's, Fuck. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's what you I own the team. Like, call it whatever you want. <laughs> exactly. Like he he started a team. He's brought over heaps of good players, and Fucking he wants nice. to call it a cocktail. Let him call it a cocktail. Like whatever. And um, okay, so this is I've I've obviously seen seen footage here and there, but if you can speak on it after you guys won the comp, talk talk us through that. Talk us through. The process of after you guys won the comp because honestly when when i seen it it looked it had that like it had that american vibe about it bro like you guys were yeah. in the changing rooms like the shield looked fucking grouse like yeah you know like they had the goggles on the fucking drinks were just pouring <laughs> i was like yes like this is this is what fucking rugby this is what rugby's missing bro like it's so i know right exactly now. bro genuine but like, yeah, i swear to I god mean, <laughs> We're popping passion pop and the NBA is like <laughs> Dom Perry. <laughs> yeah. The guys like, don't spill it, don't spill it. Like, don't spill it. <laughs> um, nah, like it was obviously like a big game um, and a lot of pressure on us to win the comp because of obviously who we had in our team and Names, yeah. new team and just that everyone, like we're basically taking the piss. We're wearing hot pink, we're in LA, like fucking you know, I love it. Everyone hates us, but I'm around it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so we finished and like, as you said, it's like, this wouldn't happen sort of in Australia or NZ. Like you roll into the change rooms and they've yeah. got this like stall set up and they, they fit you for the championship rings. Like you get grouse, rings. Grouse. Um, I haven't got it yet, but they fit you for the rings. They give you like a chain, which is like the diamond chain with like oh, MLR champions. That's they the give you your goggles. There's like a big thing of all this champagne and they just, you just go in the change room and just send it. Um, and it was like, we had all our family and friends in there, which is like, probably the most satisfying part because they don't get to see a lot of that stuff most of the time. Um, you know, sing the team song, just like, that's ob- like, in my opinion, that's the best part about rugby after a win, sitting in the change room, having a beer and just, yeah. just sort of soaking all that up. Cause there's, there's nothing really in life like it. Yeah. Um, so like it was, that was special. Um, and then fuck the next few days was, <laughs> was big time. Like, yeah. <laughs> Um, Where'd you guys go? Talk, talk to me. Talk to me. So, so Gilly, the owner, he was he was there, and he booked. He'd sort of planned that first night. It was a Sunday night around families and friends, and so they could sort of we could celebrate them and everything yeah, that's course. gone on this year, which was great. So we went to just a few bars around. Um, they booked out a few bars around Hermosa, which is sort of down that way a bit, um, which was really really nice. Finished up maybe like five, four or five o'clock or something like that. So not not a massive one, but solid night yeah um and then woke up in the morning and there's a message from our owner saying um you've got to be at hq at our train facility at 10 30 we're going to vegas for two nights <laughs> oh so, so that was like, just off the bat that was off the yeah, bat like you guys didn't even know yeah so they'd sort of dangled um the carrot a little bit throughout the week like okay there's been whispers and we we're like Fuck, imagine if we actually had to go so then yeah we met at hq um drove to the airport jumped on a flight that's and we're in Vegas by, you know, 45 minutes later, sitting by the pool. And yeah, he booked out, he booked out all the rooms and um, yeah, we had the whole squad down in Vegas sitting by the pool at the win. Um, it was any of the know, boys smack- getting messages off, off the, off the, mess- off, off the wives saying, <laughs> <"Fuck it." laughs> well, I, I actually had the good slash bad job of like booking all the stuff that we're doing. So oh, yeah, obviously yeah. We're, we were there like Monday, Tuesday night, um, so Monday night, I was like, where can we go in Vegas on a Monday? There's not much going. So have you been to Vegas? No, 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 no. Fuck no. Bro. I don't know. If I, <laughs> you, you wouldn't come back. I don't know if I'll come home. I don't know if, I'll, if I'd survive, to be to be honest with yeah. you. And the stories That'd I hear about done. LA and Vegas, yeah, it'd be, yeah. it would have been a good life lived though. Yeah. Um, so so I, booked, I booked a dinner just so like everyone could sober up and you know we could have feed together and stuff. And then I booked out... Um, Spearmint Rhino, which is like the big strip club there. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like their sort of infamous strip club. So we booked out like the back room there and all the girls and we had some staff there, so it wasn't too loose, but yeah, I'm yeah. sure there'll be a few misses, misses back home just <laughs> sitting on the phone, just yeah, like... <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully none of the boys lied. <laughs> <laughs> right now I'm saying rippers. <laughs> oh, well, fuck, oh, man. 
That's oh, on them, bro. Fucking, That's on honesty, them. Honesty. Honesty. Yeah, honesty, bro. On it, like I can't wait to go to LA, man, and just like out of COVID and just talk to a few girls and you know, just I'm <laughs> just joking. Just <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> so you've got those eyes on yeah. <laughs> No, no, yeah. I'm just joking. Um, but yeah. <laughs> No, nah, but I'm honestly I'm so excited to go over, bro. But who knows when the fuck yeah. that'll be? But um, oh, we'll, um, we'll jump on some of these questions to, to yeah. finish it up, man. Because um, I've got to jump on another potty in about twenty. But um, Sweet. shoot, they, they, oh, are you happy for me to just shoot? They, all of these are pretty fun. Some of them are weird questions, you bro. Really? You wrote them, mate. Eh? I you didn't write these are all these are all here on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, you wrote so, them. I can see these, are all, these aren't me, bro. <laughs> these are the boys. All right. Um okay, cool. Oh, okay. How do I okay? First question. How do how do I get a how do I get a girlfriend like yours? That's the oh first question. God. These are quick quick rapid, quick fire questions. Um, shave your head and be confident. <laughs> Favorite favorite drink and why? Um, Negroni and just because I can smash them at night and chill out. This is a nice question. How old are the pups? My dogs? Yeah. Three and a half. I was like, what are my other pups? <laughs> which player you've uh, which player you've played with has the biggest cock? <laughs> uh, Luke Burton in my team now, bro. Massive hammer. Oh, Massive from, hammer. he's from Perth too, eh? Yeah, he's from Perth. Yeah, yeah. I played yeah. with them too. Yeah, bro, have you seen his hammer? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> oh my god! Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Text I might him. have to I'm inbox cool. him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this is this is a weird question. <laughs> oh no. Anyways, best player in the M- MLR. Uh, Matt Guido. Matt Guido. All-time fave piece of vintage kit. Uh had a 90s Bulls t-shirt that I actually gave to my mate as a present which I regret highly but that was that was all time good gift um wait why is well why has Bill stopped posting on the club I'm not too sure what that means is that like we, we, did you uh, have no nah, it's like a separate club through Subify that it was sort of like a private club the Bill Meese club and it's still going but they're transitioning from a web- website to an app so it's sort of stopped all posting but it'll be back how was the bender after you won the MLR? Um, One word. Probably the most <laughs> oh, painful. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, do you have any embarrassing stories of your current or former teammates out on the piss? Um, not that I can share on here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no way. Best looking player that you've played with? Um, oh, good question. Uh, Matt Phillip, my old what's, roomie. Your old roomie. Uh, yeah. What's what's your lip regime? How do you get those things off tap? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, just fill up once a month, and it's all good. <laughs> once a month. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, when did you get into vintage clothing? Uh, probably about eighteen months ago. Um, Jackson was a big part of that, but. Um, yeah yeah always liked rocking it i've always liked sort of men's fashion and then got into it and it's sort of like addictive and then coming over here it's grown even yeah. more but yeah well yeah i forgot to ask about that bro so like how did you and jackson end up linking up we actually didn't even speak about i that. think it was literally just online like we sort of as you do just like drop comments or likes or whatever yeah yeah um, and then and then he had like a little group going for some footy boys um that i was a part of and then I don't know. We just sort of kept in touch. And then when I moved over here, it, it sort of seemed like a too good opportunity to be true. So we just sort of got is this a, idea is together. There, is and there vintage kit, like vintage clothes over there galore? Everywhere, bro. Like really? everywhere. Like, and what, what's the price like, literally range I go down for a coffee. Oh, yeah. There's some expensive stuff. Like you got to hit, like I learned pretty quickly, you got to hit the right spots to get a good price, like the markets. Mm. And you sort of got to know the shop owners to get the price they pay for it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it sort of ranges, but there's still expensive stuff over here. But if you go to markets on a Sunday, like Rose Bowl markets, you pick up like teas that you could, people would pay 150 bucks for, for 10 bucks, maybe. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I always try and jump into Jackson's box before he puts it up. <laughs> yeah. But also, just to, just to finish your man, I was, 
Yeah. I was um talking to Mumsy this morning and she's like, Oh, you know, you guys have you guys met? And I was like, Do you remember that time? Do you remember We've that? We've met din- a few times, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But remember that we went to di- dinner at Khan's pl- uh Khan's yeah, yeah, yeah. restaurant. Yeah. yeah. That was the first time they were super, super random. And then I just seen oh, you. I feel like few- we met I feel like we met once before on the piss at uh, not Pornico. Um Two two wrongs, you know, two wrongs. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like we might have met there. Yeah, we met there too, bro. It was so, I was so random. I, fuck, I think I was with a few, few of the boys from from Perth or something like that, and then they we linked up with you guys. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah, and then we had that sit down dinner at at Khan's restaurant. (laughs) It was like meeting Khan, and then I'm sitting in a booth with you, and it's like a small four. I'm like, all right, (laughs) yeah, sweet. All right, let's get into it. Oh yeah, bro. But uh, no, nah, look forward, look forward to catching up again, man. And um, yeah, for sure. Fucking, uh, when are you, when are you guys planning? Are you guys planning on coming home anytime soon or nah? Nah, not till next year. I think it's too hard at the moment. Like to go two weeks quarantine and then yeah, be yeah. quarantining. It's like fair, not worth fair. it. And is, are the boys yeah. staying over there as well? The boys just gonna yeah. stay there too. Yeah, grouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, brother. Well, thanks so much, man, for coming on again. Thanks for your time, bro. And um, I'll just... No worries, bro. I'll quickly just stop it.